Hello everybody and welcome to King of Titan Racing. Today, we're going to paint the car. In today's video, I'm going to go through all the preparation stages for the car and the actual painting process itself. Before that, you can see I'm in a paint booth I've set up, so if you're doing the job yourself or you want to see that process, click the video up here or in the link below. Now the first thing to do before you do anything else is pick a colour, and that can be a bit more complicated than you think because colours that you know you like might not look good on your car. An example, I picked Aston Martin China Grey, but when I ordered it in and sprayed it on a test panel, one of the ones I took off the car, I realized it didn't quite match the red features. So I actually chose another color, which was Porsche Cleda, affectionately known by those who like to spec GT cars as crayon. And God, that looks good in person. And with this, with the bronze wheels and the red detailing, it's gonna look amazing. So let's start by going through the steps. Now, 80% of your finished job is just great preparation. And there's quite a few steps to do before you get anywhere near spraying. Now, the primer and paints you get will come with technical data sheets, and on here it gives you everything you need to know about how to set up the compressor, the pressure you need, how to set up the gun, what you need to sand things back to. Now, I need to sand everything I'm painting to a 240, which is what I've done. And if you've got bare metal, if you've got paint, filler, fiberglass, these can potentially all need different grades, so check what your primer requires. Now, I've done all those first stages, so now I need to mask everything off, degrease it again, and then jack the car up in the air, finish masking off in the area so I can get a nice even coverage around the bodywork, and then finally I will tack it down and it's time to paint. So, let's get to work. Now that it's come time to do the actual spraying, the very last stage before we do is to tack cloth the parts over. This is a sticky rag and what it will essentially do is just pick up all the little bits of, small bits of dust and things like that that have settled on the part since we brought it in. And after I've done this to all of the parts, we're going to get spraying. Mixing the paint is actually super easy. If you get one of these cups which has the measurements on it, you simply take the ratio you're supposed to use on your data sheet and then fill it up to the right amount and you get a perfect mix every time. Before I start to paint the car, I'm going to use a panel that I took off of the old body kit to first of all practice my technique, but also actually see the finished product and I can see the difference in all six stages as we go. The technique I'm going to be using is called keeping a wet edge. And what that means is if I leave an edge on the part, I come back to it before it dries off. So if I were to come halfway across this and then come from the other side back into the center, and I would do that on, let's say, the roof panels, which are quite wide and too wide to go across in one arm length. Then I just need to get back to that center line before it dries. So let's take a look at how that's going to work. I'm really glad I did this test because now it's really easy for me to see the value in each stage of this so you can clearly distinctively see each of the six stages and why we do three of each. The way that the primer completely changes colour and becomes so uniform by the third layer but by the end the shine is really coming through as it builds up. Now I'm using a cellulose paint so I don't need to do any clear coat which is why you haven't seen me do that. In my paint, the clear coat is actually mixed in with the paint. So, that's the practice done. Time to get to work. Thank you. 
So that's the first layer of primer down and different parts came out to different standards. There's some issues on the bonnet that I'm going to address now. The quality got better as I went. I kept adjusting the gun as I was going through and I was spraying on the wall as you would have seen and changing the settings. I think I've got it where I want it now. So as I go through the next layers it will all smooth out a bit. Now between layers though you need to sand back so you want a nice big soft pad and I'm starting with 400 grit and then as I do my second layer I'll go to 800 and my third layer I'll do 1000 grit and then it'll be time to let that set properly and then come back with the paint. Okay, I'm now two layers of primer in, ready to do the third, and I've flattened everything back. These parts are all great, but the bonnet, I'm seeing some hairline fractures come through. I'm really not happy with it. I think it's going to look terrible if I continue. So that part's now going to come out of the process, and then tomorrow, while the paint is drying on all of these, I'm going to take time to sand that one right back, maybe even do some more filler where it's needed, where the problem areas are, and that can come back into the process, starting over with the next batch. It's really important if something's not going right, take it out, put it to the side and start again if necessary because otherwise you're just wasting your own time. And that is the end of the first day. The parts are now drying, the third coat's on, and the colour is really starting to come through. I'm really looking forward to seeing these tomorrow, coming along and seeing that shine, having really settled in. Now, all I've really got are these three pieces. The bonnet, as I said, needs to be redone, but I'll get on with that tomorrow, and we'll come back with a whole new set of parts, and we'll keep going until we've done everything. Then we get to put it all back together.
we're moving on to the second side of the car now after the first side went really well I did however make one mistake and it was actually in the preparation so I masked off half of the blue paint by accident really stupid mistake but fixable so what I'm going to do now is sand back this area a little bit then I'm going to put primer on the blue part and then take off some extra masking tape and I'm going to then blend the paint so that we hopefully won't be able to see that stair when it's finished. So the third layer has now sat and dry on this side of the car however I made one mistake and it's this run here so I'm now going to sand that back with the 1200 I've been using and then we'll see what we need to do to it. Right, I have come back to everything after letting it all dry for 24 hours, so it's now time to put all the trim back on and then we can put this thing back together. And here it is, the finished product. 14 hours a piece, four batches, and six layers each. All worth it to see the car in this finished state. I think the Porsche crayon color looks amazing on this kit and it really suits the curves of the car. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, if you're doing this job yourself, do check out our video on how to set up the booth, the one behind me with all the kit we used. And as always, thanks for watching. It makes a huge difference to us when you like and subscribe. And we'll see you soon.